Hello and welcome, great to have you here. Today's audio is Snow White and the Seven Dwarves and it's by the Brothers Grimm. Once upon a time in the middle of winter, when the flakes of snow were falling like feathers from the sky, a queen sat at a window sewing and the frame of the window was made of black ebony. And while she was sewing and looking out of the window at the snow, she pricked her finger with a needle and three drops of blood fell upon the snow and the red looked pretty upon the white snow, and she thought to herself, Would that I had a child as white as snow, as red as blood, and as black as wood of the window frame? Soon after that she had a little daughter, who was as white as snow, and as red as blood, and her hair was as black as ebony, and she was therefore called Little Snow White. And when the child was born, the queen died. After a year had passed, the king took himself another wife. She was a beautiful woman, but proud and haughty, and she could not bear that anyone else should surpass her in beauty. She had a wonderful looking glass, and when she stood in front of it and looked at herself in it, she said, Looking glass, looking glass, on the wall, who in this land is the fairest of all? The looking glass answered, Thou, O queen, art the fairest of all. Then she was satisfied for she knew that the looking glass spoke the truth. But Snow White was growing up, and growing more and more beautiful, and when she was seven years old she was as beautiful as the day, and more beautiful than the queen herself. And once when the queen asked her looking glass, Looking glass, looking glass, on the wall, who in this land is the fairest of all? It answered, Thou art fairer than all who are here, Lady Queen, but more beautiful still is Snow White, as I ween. The queen was shocked and turned yellow and green with envy. From that hour, whenever she looked at Snow White, her heart heaved in her breast. She hated the girl so much. And envy and pride grew higher and higher in her heart like a weed, so that she had no peace day or night. She called a huntsman and said, Take the child away into the forest. I will no longer have her in my sight. Kill her and bring me back her heart as a token. The huntsman obeyed and took her away. But when he had drawn his knife and was about to pierce Snow White's innocent heart, she began to weep and said, Our oh dear huntsman, leave my life. I will run away into the wild forest and never come home again. And as she was so beautiful, the huntsman had pity on her and said, Run away then, you poor child. The wild beast will soon have devoured you, thought he. And yet it seemed as if a stone had been rolled from his heart since it was no longer needful for him to kill her. As a young boy just then came running by, he stabbed it, and cut out its heart, and took it to the queen, as proof that the child was dead. The cook had to salt this, and the wicked queen ate it, and thought she had eaten the heart of Snow White. But now the poor child was all alone in the great forest, and so terrified that she looked at every leaf of every tree, and did not know what to do. Then she began to run, and run over sharp stones and through thorns, and the wild beast ran past her but did her no harm. She ran as long as her feet would go until it was almost evening. Then she saw a little cottage and went in to rest herself. Everything in the cottage was small, but neater and cleaner than could be told. There was a table on which was a white cover and seven little plates, and on each plate a little spoon. Moreover, there were seven little knives and forks and seven little mugs. Against the walls were seven little beds side by side and covered with Snow White counterpanes. Little Snow White was so hungry and thirsty that she ate some of the vegetables and bread from each plate and drank a drop of wine out of each mug, for she did not wish to take all from only one. Then, as she was so tired, she laid herself down on one of the little beds, but none of them suited her. One was too long, another too short, but at last she found the seventh one was right and she remained in it, said a prayer, and went to sleep. When it was quite dark, the owners of the cottage came back. There were seven dwarves who dug and delved in the mountains for all. They lit their seven candles, and as it was now light within the cottage, they saw that someone had been there, for everything was not in the same order in which they had left it. The first said, Who's been sitting on my chair? The second, Who's been eating off my plate? The third, who's been taking some of my bread? The fourth, 
Who's been eating my vegetables? The fifth. Who's been using my fork? The sixth. Who's been cutting up with my knife? The seventh. Who's been drinking out of my mug? Then the first looked round and saw that there was a little hole on his bed. Who's been getting into my bed? The others came up and each called out. Somebody's been lying in my bed too. But the seventh, when he looked at his bed, saw little Snow White who was lying asleep therein. And he called to the others who came running up, and they cried out with astonishment, and bought their seven little candles, and let the light fall on little Snow White. Oh, heavens! Oh, heavens! cried they. What a lovely child! And they were so glad they did not wake her up, but let her sleep on the bed. And the seventh dwarf slept with his companions, one hour with each, and so got through the night. When it was morning, little Snow White awoke, and she was frightened when she saw the seven dwarves. But they were friendly, and asked her what her name was. My name is Snow White, she answered. How have you come to our house? said the dwarves. Then she told him that her stepmother had wished her to be killed, but that the huntsman spared her life, and that she had run for the whole day, until at last she found their dwelling. The dwarf said, If you will take care of our house, cook, make the beds, wash, sew and knit, and if you will keep everything neat and clean, you can stay with us, and you shall want for nothing. Yes, said Snow White, with all my heart. And she stayed with them. She kept the house in order for them. In the mornings they went to the mountains and looked for copper and gold. In the evenings they came back, and then their supper had to be ready. The girl was alone the whole day, so the good dwarfs warned her and said, Beware of your stepmother, she will soon know that you are here. Be sure to let no one come in. But the queen, believing that she had eaten Snow White's heart, could not but think that she was again the first and most beautiful of all, and she went to her looking-glass and said, Looking-glass, looking-glass, on the wall, who in this land is the fairest of all? And the glass answered, O queen, thou art fairest of all, I see, but over the hills where the seven dogs dwell, Snow White is still alive and well and none is as fair as she. The queen was astounded, for she knew that the looking-glass never spoke falsely, and she knew that the huntsman had betrayed her, and that little Snow White was still alive. And so she thought and thought again how she might kill her, for so long as she was not the fairest in the whole land, envy let her have no rest. And when she had at last thought of something to do, she painted her face and dressed herself like an old peddler woman, and no one could have known her. In this disguise, she went over the seven mountains to the seven dwarves, knocked at the door and cried, Pretty things to sell, very cheap, very cheap. Little Snow White looked out of the window and called out, Good day, my good woman, what have you to sell? Good things, pretty things, she answered. Stay laces of all colours. And she pulled out one which was woven of bright coloured silk. I may let the worthy old woman in, thought Snow White, and she unbolted the door and bought the pretty laces. Child, said the old woman, what a fright you look. Come, I will lace you properly for once. Snow White had no suspicion, but stood before her and let herself be laced with the new laces. But the old woman laced so quickly and so tightly that Snow White lost her breath and fell down as if dead. Now I am the most beautiful, said the queen to herself and ran away. Not long afterwards, in the evening, the seven dwarfs came home, but how shocked they were when they saw their dear little Snow White lying on the ground, and that she neither stirred nor moved, and seemed to be dead. They lifted her up, and, as they saw that she was laced too tightly, they cut the laces. Then she began to breathe a little, and after a while came to life again. When the dwarfs heard what had happened, they said, The old peddler woman was no one else than the wicked queen. Take care, and let no one come in when we are not with you. But the wicked woman, when she had reached home, went in front of the glass and asked, Looking glass, looking glass, on the wall, who in this land is the fairest of all? And it answered as before, O queen, thou art fairest of all, I see, but over the hills where the seven dwarves dwell, Snow White is still alive and well, and none is fair as she. When she heard that, all her blood rushed into her heart with fear, for she saw plainly that little Snow White was again alive. 
But now, she said, I will think of something that shall put an end to you. And by the help of witchcraft, which she understood, she made a poisonous comb. Then she disguised herself and took the shape of another old woman. So she went over the seven mountains to the seven dwarves, knocked on the door and cried, Good things to sell, cheap, cheap. Little Snow White looked out and said, Go away, I cannot let anyone come in. I suppose you can look, said the old woman, and pulled the poisonous comb out and held it up. It pleased the girl so well that she let herself be beguiled, and they opened the door. When they had made a bargain, the old woman said, Now I will comb you properly for once. Poor little Snow White had no suspicion, and let the old woman do as she pleased. But hardly had she put the comb in her hair, than the poison took its effect and the girl fell down senseless. You paragon of beauty, said the wicked woman. You are done for now, and she went away. But fortunately it was almost evening, when the dwarfs came home. When they saw Snow White lying as if dead upon the ground, they at once suspected the stepmother, and they looked and found the poison comb. Scarcely had they taken it out when Snow White came to herself, and told them what had happened. They warned her once more to be upon her guard and to open the door to no one. The queen at home went in front of the glass and said, Looking glass, looking glass, on the wall, who in this land is the fairest of all? Then he answered as before, O queen, thou art fairest of all, I see, but over the hills where the seven doors dwell, Snow White is still alive and well, and no one is as fair as she. When she heard the glass speak thus, she trembled and shook with rage. Snow White shall die, she cried, even if it costs me my life. Thereupon she went into quite a secret, lonely room, where no one ever came, and there she made a very poisonous apple. Outside it looked pretty, white, with a red cheek, so that everyone who saw it longed for it, but whoever ate a piece of it must surely die. When the apple was ready, she painted her face, and dressed herself up as a countrywoman, and so she went over the seven mountains to the seven dwarfs. She knocked on the door. Snow White put her head out of the window and said, I cannot let anyone in. The seven dwarfs have forbidden me. It is all the same to me, answered the woman. I shall soon get rid of my apples. There, I will give you one. No, said Snow White, I dare not take anything. Are you afraid of poison? said the old woman. Look, I will cut the apple in two pieces. You eat the red cheek, and I'll eat the white. The apple was so cunningly made that only the red cheek was poisoned. Snow White longed for the fine apple, and when she saw the woman ate part of it, she could resist no longer, stretched out her hand and took the poisonous half. But hardly had she a bit of it in her mouth when she fell down dead. The queen looked at her with a dreadful look, and laughed aloud and said, White as snow, red as blood, black as ebony, wood. This time the dwarfs cannot wake you up again. And when she asked of the looking glass at home, Looking glass, looking glass, on the wall, who in this land is the fairest of all? It answered at last, O queen, in this land thou art fairest of all. Then her envious heart had rest, so far as an envious heart can have rest. The dwarfs, when they came home in the evening, found Snow White lying upon the ground. She breathed no longer, and she was dead. They lifted her up, looked to see whether they could find anything poisonous, unlaced her, combed her hair, washed her with water and wine, but it was all of no use. The poor child was dead, and remained dead. They laid her upon a bier, and all seven of them sat around it and wept for her, and wept three days long. Then they were going to bury her, but still she looked as if she were living, and she still had her pretty red cheeks. They said, We could not bury her in the dark ground. And they had a transparent coffin of glass made, so that she could be seen from all sides, and they laid her in it, and wrote her name upon it in golden letters, and that she was a king's daughter. Then they put the coffin out upon the mountain, and one of them always stayed by it and watched it. And birds came too, and wept for Snow White, first an owl, then a raven, and last a dove. And now Snow White lay a long, long time in the coffin. She did not change, but looked as if she were asleep, for she was as white as snow, as red as blood, 
and her hair was as black as ebony. It happened, however, that a king's son came into the forest and went to the dwarf's house to spend the night. He saw the coffin on top of the mountain, and the beautiful snow white within it, and read what was written upon it in golden letters. Then he said to the dwarves, Let me have the coffin, I will give whatever you want for it. But the dwarves answered, We will not part with it for all the gold in the world. Then he said, Let me have it as a gift, for I cannot live without seeing Snow White. I will honour and prize it as my dearest possession. As he spoke in this way, the good dwarves took pity on him, gave him the coffin. And now the king's son had it carried away by his servants on their shoulders. And it happened that they stumbled over a tree stump, and with the shock of the poisonous piece of apple, which Snow White had bitten off, came out of her throat. And long before she opened her eyes, lifted up the lid of the coffin, sat up, and once more alive. Oh heavens, where am I? she cried. The king's son, full of joy, said, You are with me, and told her what had happened, and said, I love you more than everything in the world. Come with me to my father's palace. You shall be my wife. And Snow White was willing and went with him, and their wedding was held with great show and splendour. But Snow White's wicked stepmother was also bidden to the feast. When she had arrayed herself in beautiful clothes, she went before the looking-glass and said, Looking-glass, looking-glass, on the wall, who in this land is the fairest of all? The glass answered, O queen, of all here the fairest art thou, but the young queen is fairer by far as I trow. Then the wicked woman uttered a curse, and was so wretched, so utterly wretched, that she knew not what to do. At first she would not go to the wedding at all, but she had no peace and must go to see the young queen. And when she went in, she saw Snow White, and she stood still with rage and fear and could not stir. But iron slippers had already been put upon the fire, and they were brought in with tongs and set before her. Then she was forced to put on the red-hot shoes and dance until she dropped down dead.